Now you should have PyCharm up and running and we're finally ready to tackle today's project, which we're going to write in PyCharm. You've just been hired, congratulations. But first, there's the matter of coffee. We all know that programmers can't work unless they're loaded up on coffee. So your company has asked you to create the code for a coffee machine. Now you very cleverly go online and look at the other coffee machines and you notice that it only costs $230 to buy a coffee machine. But you're not gonna cheat. You're gonna create everything from scratch. And luckily we don't actually have to build the hardware because we're programmers, right? But we're gonna use this real life coffee machine as the inspiration for our virtual coffee machine, noting the features and the capabilities. So what does it say? I found some wonderful graphics on here, which tells me that there are three hot flavors, which I'm guessing are these three buttons. It's coins operate, which I think they mean it's coin operated, and there's not much else that it can do. Let's take this example, and we're going to make a digital version of it. We're gonna create our own coffee machine. And the first step we need to replicate is the ability to make three hot flavors. So the flavors we're gonna make are one espresso, two latte, and three cappuccino. Here are the recipes for these three types of drinks. Each of them requires a different quantity of water, a different quantity of coffee, and a different quantity of milk and they also each have a different price. We're gonna be modeling all this data in our coffee machine program as well. But luckily for you, in the starting code, I've already included all of this data inside a dictionary. So you don't have to remember this. Although it might help if you're at home and you decided that you really wanted a latte instead of your usual black coffee. Now, in addition, the coffee machine has some resources that it has to manage. So it starts out with 300 mils of water in the tank, 200 mils of milk, and 100 grams of coffee. The second feature of our coffee machine is that it's coin operated. So we're gonna be using American coins, and they have four types of coins, the penny, the nickel, the dime, and the quarter. They used to also have the dollar as a coin, but a few years ago, they stopped minting that, so we're not gonna count it. And it probably means one less if statement for us. Notice what each of these coins are worth. The penny is worth a cent, the nickel worth five cents, and the dime 10 cents, and the quarter is a quarter of a dollar. These represented in decimal values would look something like this. Now here's the important part. Let's think about what our program requirements are if we break it down. One, we need our coffee machine to be able to print a report. It needs to be able to tell us what resources it has left, how much water it has left, how much milk, etc. If you head over to the completed version of the coffee machine, the link is in the course resources and you can go ahead and try out the final version of the coffee machine. So let's say that we wanted a report on all the resources that the machine has. All we have to do is type report and we can see all the resources we have. Now, in addition to being able to print a report, we also want to be able to check that the resources are sufficient when the user orders a drink. Now, let's say that the user decided to order a latte. It asks me to insert some coins and then it gives me the change and it gives me the latte. But now if I check the report, I can see that I've only got 100 mils of water left and I know from the previous slide that a latte and a cappuccino is gonna need more than that amount of water. So let's see what happens if I go ahead and order a cappuccino. It says, sorry, there's not enough water. So our program is able to look through all the resources that the machine has, checks it against the recipe of the drink that we're trying to make and tells the user if there is insufficient water or if there's insufficient milk. And as long as one of the resources is insufficient, then it can't make the drink and it gives the feedback to the user. Now, as you saw before, our program also needs to be able to process coins because our machine is coin operated. So no fancy contactless payments or pay with your Apple Watch, none of that. We've only got coins. When we order something, 
it should ask us to insert coins and it's going to ask for the quantity of each type of coin. So let's say that I insert one of each, then in this case, there's actually not enough money to cover my drink and it refunds the money and doesn't give me a drink. But on the other hand, if I do insert enough money, then it should be able to calculate how much money all of these coins are worth and then calculate the amount of change based on the cost of my drink. And then it should hand me my drink and tell me to enjoy. So in addition to being able to process the four types of coins, calculating the actual monetary value based on the number of coins, it should also check that the transaction is successful, that the user didn't try to hoodwink us by not giving enough coins and asking for a drink. So if they haven't inserted enough coins, then we're just going to refund them and tell them, sorry, that's not enough money and not give them their drink. But if the transaction was successful, then we're going to make the coffee. And in the process of making the coffee, we're going to have to deduct the resources. Notice how every time we make a drink, say in this time we made a latte, and previous to the latte, we had 300 mils of milk. But after the latte, when we asked for the report, you can see that the water has been reduced, the milk has been reduced, the coffee has been reduced, and the money has been put into the coffers. This program, even though it seems simple, just a simple digital version of a coffee machine, it actually has quite a few requirements. So I recommend that you look at the screen and try to see how each of the requirements work by having a play around with the final version of the code. Now, I've created a detailed program specification for you as a PDF file, which you can download in the course resources. And this goes into a lot more details on each of those points. For example, what should the prompt print in the beginning of the program? And then how to turn the machine off, how to print the reports, and how each of those points should work in detail. Go ahead and download this and make sure you read each of the sections and test it out in the final working version of the project. Once you're ready, you can go ahead and head over to the starting version of the code. And again, I'm sharing this using REPLIT, but I want you to copy everything that's in here. There's only one file, the main.py file, and I want you to create a new project using PyCharm and call it Coffee Machine. And then create a new file inside your project called main.py. And then paste all of the starting code into your main.py. And now you're going to code inside this file. And once you're ready, you're going to click run and you'll be able to run this main.py down here, and this will act as your console. Now, one really handy feature of PyCharm is something called to-do tracking. Whereas previously in Repolit, I've been creating to-dos and you've been able to view them. But if I had lots of to-dos in different places, you can't actually see all of them at once. You have to scroll through the file looking for them. But in a professional tool, we actually have something called to-do tracking and it's a tab that's down here. So if I go ahead and take some of these program requirements, I can put them in as to-dos. To create a to-do, you have to follow the syntax. First is a pound sign, and then we write to-do in all caps, and notice how that's just changed color just now. And now you can see in the to-do tab, it's found one to-do item. Now we can write to do number one, and this is to print a report of all the coffee machine resources. Now, let's say that I created a to do somewhere else, right? Like all the way up here. Check that the resources are sufficient to make the drink order. And notice how they're completely in different places in a different order. But every time I create one of these to do's using this format, it will get picked up in the to do tab and you can go ahead and see where they live. So it's found two items inside our main.py and you can see that this one is to do one, this one is to do two. And when you click on them, they'll take you to the correct places in your code.
Use this to break down the problem into smaller problems that you can solve one by one, just as you've done before, and try to see if you can complete this project. Just a word of warning, this project is quite ambitious, but you've now got professional tools to help you and you've got a lot more skill under your belt. So give this problem at least an hour to work on it and make sure that you satisfy all the criteria that's set out in the program requirements and also that your program works exactly the same as the final version of the coffee machine. 